round about his people from henceforth and forever. For the rod of the wicked shall not rest upon the lot of the righteous, lest the righteous put forth their hands unto iniquity. Do good, O God, unto those that be good, and to them that are upright in heart. As for such as turn aside unto their crooked ways, the Lord shall lead them forth as the workers of iniquity. But peace be upon Israel. Let us lift our hearts to God in prayer this time. Lord, we thank you for another day. Many saw the sunset yesterday but did not see the sunrise this morning. And Lord, we thank you that you have kept us, O oh God. You have given us another opportunity to, to worship and to praise and to lift up your holy name. And so God, we invite your presence here that you touch down with power. We thank you for those in Bowie, Maryland who have joined us, O oh God. We thank you for those who are on Zoom right now looking upon us, O oh God, and joining us virtually, coming together as it were in a place where God is present. We pray that you're going to bless us as we gather here. We pray that you'll bless, O oh God, not only those of us who are here, but Lord, we, we walk in the footsteps of those who are in Afghanistan, going through a difficult time. We look at the, the pandemic at this time, O oh God, and how it's still ravaging in certain states. We pray, O oh God, that you're going to bless. We pray for those who have economic problems, and Lord, we know that tomorrow the federal pandemic, pandemic unemployment benefit will be lifted, and some people will not get that money again. But God, we pray that you'll be a source of their supply, that you're going to bless them. We ask you, Lord, to bless those who have suffered damages from the floods and those who have lost loved ones because of the floods that hit us. Lord, we pray that you're going to bless your people, Lord, as we look to you. Even right now, Lord, we pray that you're going to bless our community. We are in the midst of the Labor Day weekend, and we know this is a time when sometimes people use the gun to set disputes and to set the revenge issues. But we pray that your spirit of peace, oh God, will fall upon your people, that the calm will be upon us. Lord, even right now, there's a hurricane, Larry, that's churning in the Atlantic. We pray, Lord, that you're going to let your power and your spirit control even the elements. You can still the storms. You can open doors. You can move mountains. You can break yokes. You can demolish strongholds. So we call upon you, oh God. And we pray today that you're going to lift us in your presence. We thank you that this is communion Sunday and that we can gather here to celebrate the Lord's Supper, Lord, and come together to remember Calvary and what he did for us. So we pray that you touch down. We lift our senior pastor, Dr. Charles Galbraith and his family, even here in, in, in Brooklyn, New York, and over there in Bowie, Maryland, that you'll bless him, bless his family, bless his wife and his children specifically, and bless all the other members of the immediate and extended family. And we pray that you're going to bless us here as a family, united together at the foot of the cross, joined together in the body of Christ. We thank you that you, have, you can cement us with the Holy Spirit and you can let us loose so we can live the life and show the world what it means to be a Christian. So be with us today. Touch them with power. Touch them with healing. Meet our every need, oh God. Meet us, Lord, where we, where we are hurting, oh God. Those who have suffered a loss of loved ones for during, during the, this period of the coronavirus. We pray specifically, God, that you're going to come close to them. So, Lord, we put our whole weight upon you because you are the source of every supply and you can meet us at every point of need. So bless us, Lord. Lift us as we celebrate, oh God. Let your power be released. Let your name be magnified in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit in Jesus' name. Let everybody say it. and say it again.
we welcome you. Those in Louis, Maryland, we thank God for you. Those who are joining us from wherever you are zooming in, we thank God for you. This is the day that the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. At this time, we welcome our praise team over here already. Let's give praises to the rock of all ages. Hallelujah. Come on, can I hear you shout hallelujah in this place? Come on, put your hands together with us. Hallelujah, we come to celebrate the Lord. Come on, how many know that the Lord is good and His mercy endures forever? Hallelujah. Come on, everybody, come on, clap with us. Hallelujah. We come to bless the Lord because He's worthy to be praised. David said, I will bless the Lord at all times and His praises shall continually be in my mouth. Come on, can we bless Him this morning? Hallelujah. God, we will bless your name. We will exalt your name. We will lift you up. We will extol you. Come on, more time. Just clap those hands. Yeah. Yeah. Come on, we give you the praise. Oh, right here.
is surely goodness and mercy shall follow you all the days of your life, and that you would dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever. Amen. We're declaring this not only over you, but over everybody who's connected to you, that the favor and the presence of God would rest, will reign, and abide over you both now and forevermore. That God's favor, that his mercy, that his goodness, that his grace would run over you even this Sunday. We lift this before the Father on this day. On this first Sunday in September, this ninth month that God has blessed us with. We lift this before our Lord and tell him thank you. If you receive that on this Sunday, can we just sing this once again and declare it that your goodness and mercy are running after me. Can we just lift this up and sing it together? and sisters in Haiti, oh God, asking, oh God, that you would send the help, the resources, and the assistance that they need even in this moment and this time. We lift up Afghanistan, oh God, as we see so much is taking place and so many people are stranded and the challenges of a nation that's going through, oh God. We pray, oh God, for your presence even to rise in Afghanistan even today, God. 
God, we lift up our family members and our church members and those within our community, oh God, who are suffering from the effects of uh, uh, Ida, Father God, even in this hurricane that's taking place and uh, washed so many away and over 50 people in our area who passed away as a result of, of this hurricane, oh God. We ask, oh God, for comfort and for strength for the families uh, that you would bring peace and strength. We lift up, Father God, Brother Wayne Dick before you, oh God, who's experiencing health challenges. We lift up Sister Mary and Garden, Father God, even experiencing a family's issues with her family and daughter, mental health challenges. We lift up Sister Rose before you, oh God, whose father got even preparing for procedure on this upcoming week, oh God, and ask, oh God, for your favor to go with her, oh God, and ahead of her. We lift up Sister Gilda Yard, oh God, who's also going for a surgical procedure on this Tuesday, oh God, asking uh, that you would be with the doctors and medical professionals, uh, but she would be her healing uh, and her strength. Uh, God, we know these challenges are great, uh, and we know these issues and concerns that are before us, but we lift it before you because we believe you have the capability and capacity to do anything but fail. So God, would you show yourself strong and show yourself mighty and show yourself as a healer we lift up every request in this room and every request that's online and every request from someone streaming. We're calling down in the name of Jesus for your favor to rest upon your people. That even as we declared last week, oh God, we are blessed. And who you bless, God, no man or woman can curse. And so, God, we are asking even right now that you would show your favor, show your presence, show your presence. stop the track. Hold, hold on. Uh, th this is uh, uh, the ninth month of the year. And I always like the first Sunday on the ninth month of the year uh, because it's during this weekend we celebrate Labor Day. Uh, and, and it's interesting uh, because uh, it takes nine months uh, uh, for something to be birthed. But something's not birth unless you go through some labor. And on this ninth month uh, uh, that you, God, has brought us to, uh, I'm here to declare on this Sunday uh, that all the labor you went through in January, uh, all the challenges you went through in February, uh, all the struggles you went through uh, in March, uh, everything you had to wrestle through in April, uh, everything you had to fight through in May, the junk you had to deal with in June, the challenge you had to wrestle with in July, the anguishes you had to go through in August. This is the ninth month, and because it is the ninth month, God's about to birth something brand new. Is there anybody in here who said this is my birthing month? Do me a favor, nudge your neighbor.
That sounds like somebody who's expecting God to do something. Uh, that I've come too far from where I started from. I can't give up now. I can't give in now. It's not finished yet. I refuse to quit. I refuse to lie down. But this is when the toughest part comes. But I'm about to push something out that God has assigned to me on this morning. What does that look like, Pastor? Uh, I'm glad you asked. It looks like though he slay me, yet will I trust him. What does it look like, Pastor? I will bless the Lord at all times, and his praise shall continually be in my mouth. What does that look like, Pastor? My soul shall make its boast in the Lord. The humble shall hear thereof and be glad. What does that look like, Pastor? Oh, magnify the Lord with me, and let us exalt his name together. On the first Sunday of the ninth month, on a Labor Day, can somebody push out a praise on this morning and say from the highest heights to the lowest lows, I'll bless the Lord. quick come on real quick the song we used to lift up and sing says praise him praise, praise him. him praise come him come on so good first sunday song praise him come on jesus come on bless it say bless it say he's worthy Save 
feeling in this place on this first Sunday. That took me all the way back to choir robes, uh, wood cubes, uh, come on, wooden floors. Come on, some of them don't know about baseboards. And come on, and lifting up Thanksgiving and praise when you had nothing. To, the, the, the thing about that song uh, is it's always interesting to me. People would be singing it who ain't have physical, material things. But they said, regardless of what's going on in our lives, we're going to praise him. The song says, from the rising of the sun to the going down of the same, his name is worthy to be praised. But before we take our seats, can somebody just help me call his name? Hold on, I thought I, thought I was in the right place. Can somebody just help me call his name? Come on, can somebody help me call his name? Come on, can somebody help me call his name? Can somebody help me call his name? I didn't say just any name, but I said the name that demons tremble. What's his name? The name that heaven and earth has to bow down. What's his name? The name that every knee has to bow. Yes, sir. And every tongue confess what's his name. I pray you to call on the name of Jesus when it shows up. Remember this Sunday morning 8.30 experience. So when it shows up this week, just pull your car over, step out of the subway, go from your cubicle, go from your classroom, and just call the name Jesus. Say, I'm practicing now, but I'm going to put it into play this week. And so every time the enemy attacks, I dare you to call this week on the name of His name has exousia authority. His name. Come on, lift your hands in this place. Let's worship the name of Jesus. Come on, there's no other name that we can call. Yeah. I love you, Jesus. I worship and adore you. Just want to tell you, Lord, I love you more than anything. Come on, Sam. I love you, Jesus. I 
and love him this morning. Come on, let's declare that with our worship. Let's declare that with our moms. Come on, lift your voice and shout and sing, I love you, Jesus. I love you, Jesus. Yes, sir. I worship and adore you. Just want to tell you, say, Lord, I love you more than anything. Come on, all over the house, lift your voice. Sing, I love you, Jesus. I love you, Jesus. I worship and adore. Come on, just one. Jesus said and announcements and information, but I'm going to go directly into the Word. So you may be seated, but then we're going to go right, right into the Word on today. I'm, I'm thankful and grateful for the Spirit of God that's in this place, the presence of God that's resting over us even in this space today. Amen? Amen? We're thankful and grateful for your presence. We want to say thank you uh, for those who were able to come out with us on last Sunday. Anybody have a good time underneath the tent? And anybody was able to tell God, thank you. 
as we marched around our neighborhood and community uh, declaring that Jesus Christ is Lord and that we're a church of deep roots and new branches. I'm going to say thank you to all those who worked so very hard behind the scenes to make that possible. It was good to see a lot of the family. I know some folks are a little uncomfortable coming into the building, but it was good to see everybody outside, amen, in fellowship. Folks we hadn't seen in almost 16, 17 months. It was good to see their faces and to be in connection and fellowship with them. Several things I need to lift up for us as we continue on in our worship experience on this morning. We want to be in prayer continually for Haiti. Uh, we're also still collecting resources and funds. Last week, I challenged you and said that we needed to, to do a little bit better uh, in regards to our funds that Bowie had brought in about $2,000. Uh, uh, well, y'all won up it. Uh, y'all brought in $3,000 last Sunday for Haiti in regards to relief. And someone say thank you for your generosity and giving. Uh, and we are continuing to still collect resources to be able to, uh, to support our brothers and sisters in Haiti. Uh, we also want to keep in prayer in our region and na nation, uh, particularly in our area, the effects of Hurricane Ida. Uh, I was not expecting that family and not expecting that at all on Wednesday night. And we mourn with those 50 individuals. I never it's up to 50 individuals in our, our uh, area who lost their lives in the midst of the hurricane. Uh, we sent out a group text to note if you were affected or afflicted by the hurricane, if you lost anything, to please contact the church office. We did not receive any information or messages from anybody who suffered uh, from the hurricane. Amen. But we want to know if you did, if you did, please contact us. We want to be of support and help and a, a strength to you during this time. Uh, and so either online or in person, if you are a part of our family and you are affected by this hurricane, have no shame in your game. Let us know so that we can uh, not only support, but also get you to the resources that you need to be able to assist. We want to note that this fall, we're starting our, uh, our, our fall discipleship. The sign-up is continuing on. We uh, did a whole series entitled Get Fit uh, in regards to developing our discipleship. Uh, our discipleship uh, classes and engagement begins on September 22nd. So you have a few more weeks, a few more weeks to sign up. If you have not signed up, please sign up today. There's UR codes. There's sign-ups uh, and, and available as you exit out for this. Uh, instead of Wednesday night, there will be no no Wednesday night Bible study. There will be no Wednesday night Bible study. It will be replaced with our discipleship groups. And so uh, make sure that you are a part of a group uh, in regards to uh, our work that's going on. It's going to be running from September 22nd to December 15th at 7 p.m. on Wednesdays. At 7 p.m. on Wednesdays via Zoom, online via Zoom. Uh, there will be teaching and then breakout groups for small group development and discipleship. Amen. Let me also give a, a, a lift up uh, for our week of prayer and fasting that taking place uh, starting this Tuesday. Week of prayer and fasting starting place this Tuesday uh, from the 7th to the 10th. Information will be posted daily concerning the fast. We are asking that you engage in this fast as we enter into the fourth quarter. This is the fourth quarter of the year. Amen. Just September, October, November, and December. That's it. Uh, and we're, we're saying this this ninth month and this Labor Day, we're going to push it. Amen. We're going to push it. Uh, and so we need to center ourselves in prayer as well as in fasting. Prayer and fasting. Uh, that's this week. Somebody say this week. All this week, we're asking, we're, we're going to give you off Labor Day so y'all can cook out, y'all can barbecue, <laughs> y'all can enjoy, enjoy. But then on Tuesday, Tuesday uh, through uh, Friday, we will be in prayer and fasting. Just a quick reminder, what is fasting? I know we do a teaching on it every year, but just a reminder for those who may have just be streaming on or just tuned in or just came in for the first time. Uh, fasting is different from dieting. Fasting is when we empty ourselves of physical food so that we can be filled with God's spirit. And so when you fast, when you empty yourself of food, whether it be for a meal or for the daytime or whatever that may be, uh, you are emptying yourselves. And many times when you empty yourselves, some of yourself comes up. And so many times when you're fasting, you're, you're not the nicest person. <laughs> you're a little more irritable because what's what? The food is not there to give comfort and to give that passivity but it gets to the raw areas of our lives that God wants to heal and deal with. 
And so when we fast, we empty ourselves of food so we can be filled up by God's spirit, right? And so we are entering into this moment. We, what we say is this way. We fill a meal with prayer. We fill a meal, meal fill, fill a meal with prayer. So instead of eating, you don't just skip the meal, but during the time that you would be eating, you consecrate that time for prayer. What is prayer? Simply communication with God. It's not only you talking to God, but also sometimes you sitting in silence and listening to what God is speaking. So we want to enter into this moment of prayer and fasting as we uh, have this last quarter of the week that's taking place, of the month of the year that's taking place. And so uh, you're engaging with, them, uh, with us on this time of prayer and fasting. We want to let you know uh, that while we were outside, somebody came to me uh, last week and was saying, listen, Pastor, we need to do this every Sunday. I said, man, y'all don't know the work that goes behind the scenes to make, make this happen every Sunday on the outside. But, but we will be outside again in September, uh, on September 18th. September 18th is International Sunday. I said September 18th is International Sunday. Y'all remember International Sunday, amen? We missed it last year, but we're bringing it back. But we know because of how it is, it's going to be outside. Now there are going to be some restrictions in regards to we won't be able to do all the foods that we nor normally do. It would have to be prepackaged foods that we are taking away with us. So we won't be able to do all the different things that we normally do. But we will be celebrating the various nations and countries that are represented within our community. I think we're up to 26 different nations and countries that are represented within our church community. And so we want to celebrate what God is doing in the midst of that. We want you to bring out all of uh, your outfits, all of your culture. Please note that there will be uh, there will be order concerning it you will have a representative from your country uh, uh, who needs to be a part of this so if you uh, want to get connected with this please know that there will be a meeting taking place on zoom on september 8th uh, september 8th at 7 p.m it'll be in your emails as well as your information to note that your country is represented and who's going to be representing it you're going to be sharing we're going to have different activities and dance and all the different things that go into celebrating who we are there will be food it'll just be uh, it, uh, packaged in a different way and uh, displayed in a different way but anybody ready for international sunday so that's two weeks away Away, two weeks away already, amen, uh, for International Sunday as we celebrate what God is doing. We also want to lift up and celebrate our Clarendon Church Alliance Women, the Women's uh, Fellowship Day in person and live stream. Uh, that is going to be on Saturday, uh, September 25th, uh, Saturday, September 25th from 11 a.m. to 2 p.m., uh, Please note that there is a lot of things going on. You will need to pre-register. Uh, I believe you'll get a link in regards to your email concerning how you can pre-register. There will be a luncheon in the fellowship hall. There'll be a book signing from our very own sister Andrea Adams. Uh, there will be a wonderful time for our women uh, to be in fellowship and connection together. Uh, once again, it's been a while since we gathered in person in regards to our women. We will do it in a safe uh, way, but we want to engage in that in our women's fellowship day on September 25th. Amen. 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 We want to also encourage the men. We saw them. They were out yesterday uh, with the young men in regards to the mentoring um, uh, mentoring that was taking place and our young men mentoring uh, that was taking place yesterday. And uh, uh, it was a wonderful time as they were on that Zoom call in connection. Uh, uh, we don't want to embarrass her, but we want to tell God thank you from one of our very own on the pastoral staff. Amen. Uh, who went through a process this week uh, uh, that was grueling and challenging, but she has brought herself through. Uh, 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 in our denomination, there's a processing of licensing as well as accrediting uh, for ministry. Uh, and we're thankful and grateful for our very own minister, Judy Pilgrim, who passed her accreditation with the Christian and Missionary Alliance uh, uh, this past week. Amen. Come on, somebody ought to celebrate and tell God thank you for Minister Judy who passed her accreditation with the Alliance. Uh, and so we're so very excited thankful and grateful for her, for those who've re been raised up in this house and who we are raising up in this house uh, to go out uh, and to share the good news of Jesus Christ. Amen. 
Amen, amen, and amen. I, I don't believe I'm forgetting anything. If I am, I charge it to my mind and not to my heart. My time is far spent. It's first Sunday. We like to normally go right, right in uh, uh, with different things with, with that. But if you could stand to your feet all over this place, we're going to be in John, the, the 14th chapter. I'm beginning a new series this Sunday entitled Homecoming, uh, and we want to lift this up. Uh, and we're just going to declare real quick, I love you, Jesus, one more time uh, as we prepare to lift up this time together uh, in worship uh, of, our, of our Lord. John, the 14th chapter uh verse number one uh, as we lift just what's the one 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 line of that can we lift it up minister quick so i love you jesus i worship and adore you just want, just want to tell you lord i love One more time, can you help me sing it? Come on, over the road, can you sing? I love you, sing. I love you, Jesus. I worship and adore you. Just, just want to tell you, Lord, I love you more than you. God, and declare our love for you. John the 14th chapter verse number one and it declares it this way let not your hearts be troubled you believe in God believe also in me in my father's house there are many mansions if it were not so I would have told you I if I would not told you so would I have told you where I'm going there to prepare a place for you and if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come back and take you to be with me, that you may be where I am. You know the way to the place where I'm going. Thomas said to him, Lord, we don't know where you are going. So how can we know the way? And Jesus answered, I am the way, the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be unto God on this morning. Would you pray with me? God of our weary ears and God of our silent tears. God has brought us thus far along the way. I pray that the words of my mouth and the collective meditations of our hearts will be acceptable in your sight, God, our strength and our redeemer. God, would you give us ears to hear your word, minds to comprehend, hearts to receive. And God, give us the zealousness of life, not just to hear your word, but to live it out each and every day. We'll be careful to give your name the glory, the honor, the adoration, the thanksgiving, and the praise. We ask these things now in the mighty and matchless name of Jesus Christ. We do declare the people of God who believe and trust God said, 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 amen and amen. Would you do me a favor before you take your seats? Would you help me place a tag and title on this particular text and series and tell your neighbor who's near you or next to you, neighbor, oh neighbor, I'm going home. Okay, would you find another neighbor and tell him, neighbor? Oh, neighbor, I'm going home. Find one other neighbor, one other neighbor, tell them, neighbor. Oh, neighbor, I'm going home. <clears throat> you may be seated in the sanctuary on this Sunday. Just getting a little bit of feedback up here, if y'all could assist me with this. We are in this sermon series, uh, beginning it, entitled Homecoming. And, and I, I love the fall season because it's the season, yes, of the leaves changing, and yes, of, of uh, the sweater weather, and yes, of the different type of warm beverages uh, that soothe our hearts and spirits. But, uh, but for me, I also love homecoming celebrations. Whether it be college or high school or other graduations or take, to take place uh, where we come back home in fellowship and remembering this place where we're gathered. Uh, there's something about home. There, there, there's something significant about home. It is the 1937 film, The Wizard of Oz, still having some trouble with, with, with this, and the 1937 Wizard of Oz that helps us help popularize the phrase, there's no place like home. 
As Dorothy clicked her heels to wake up from this journey from fantasy in Oz to the reality of Kansas, she kept on repeating over and over again that there's no place like home. But what I want to suggest that this idea of home is older than the Wizard of Oz. Uh, but rather, you can even look in 1832 in the words of John Howard Payne from the opera Clara, who declares this phrase and popularizes this phrase, home sweet home. Uh, ho home family is not just a place of residence. Uh, it, it's not as the dictionary defines a place where you live permanently. Uh, home is a place of origin. It, it, it's a place of comfort. There, there's something about even that phrase, home cooking. <laughs> That, that does something to you that you feel the warm embrace. That there's that home style. Or, 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 or it's something that's called homey. Because it's familiar. It is connected. I want to suggest that home is more than a domicile of dwelling. Uh, but, but home is a feeling and experience that we go back to. Now, now, let's be honest with one another. Not all of us had idyllic home life. Not everybody's home was peaceful. So, some of us come from homes where there is abuse, pain, loss, harm, and some of us don't feel even being safe in what the place we called home. Some of us come from homes that there is uncertainty, there is toxicity, there is wounding, and there is pain. But I want to suggest that even in those toxic, difficult places, there was some space that you felt that you could run to uh, to be safe, whether it was a closet or whether it was your bed or whether it was your dreams at night. There was some place where you said, now I can feel safe at home. I, I wanted to make a distinction a little bit more now on the monitors. I, I know we're trying to work this uh, here, but I want to make sure I can preach all my messages for, 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 this, for this Sunday. That I want to suggest that there is a distinction uh, between simply a house and a home. Can, 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 I, can I pull the theologian Luther Vandross? <laughs> as, as he simply says, a chair is still a chair even when there's no one sitting there. But a chair is not a house, and a house is not a home when there's no one there to hold you tight and no one there to kiss you. Come on, some of y'all know some, some of y'all know some Luther, some of y'all. <laughs> there, there, there is a distinction between just an edifice of a building that you say is your home as well, as opposed to a place that you go to where you can feel peace and feel comfort, and feel as though that here is safety. In, in our passage today, we find that Jesus is talking about not just a house, but a home. He, he's talking with his disciples, uh, and he's talking during what we call uh, uh, the Last Supper. They're, they're sitting around the table, and during this time around the table, uh, he washes their feet to show he is humble and compassionate and caring and loving. He also communicates to his disciples that somebody around the table is going to betray him. Spoiler alert, that's Judas. He also lets them know there's somebody around the table who's going to deny him. Second spoiler alert, come on, that is Peter. But, but as Jesus is letting them know this, he's also preparing them because he's letting them know that I'm about to leave you. Uh, that, that, that I'm going to exit and you're going to go through some challenges and difficult places. But he also encourages them to let them know, even though you are dislocated, even though you'll be in this liminal space, uh, that there is a place called home. 
that you can go to. And I want to encourage somebody who's even streaming in. Uh, if you're streaming, could you share this? Could you let us know? Somebody else know? I want to encourage somebody who's sitting in the physical sanctuary, some, somebody who's gathering here with us, uh, to let you know and to remind you that you have a home. If you are a believer, you are not homeless. I'll say it again. If, if you are a believer, you are not homeless. There is a place where you belong. We're entering into the time where many of our college students have already gone back to college, and many of our students are preparing to go back to school next week, and we'll have a special prayer for them. Uh, but in my studies concerning uh, educational development and what makes the best learning environment for youth and young people, it is Sharon Dozel uh, in her book who suggests that there is something significant when we see young people who are successful in college and those who have challenges in college. They, they said the distinction is this. She is a, a college chaplain who has served in many colleges in many different places. And she suggests, as the title of her book argues, is that there needs to be a sense of belonging for young people to find their place and to grow successfully within their collegiate endeavors. I, I want to suggest uh, uh, that when you have a place where you say, I belong here, it encourages you, even when you are not there, to be encouraged that I've got a place to go back to. I, I want to argue that there's something about home. And over these next couple of weeks, as we talk about home, I want to lift up several things to help us understand what home means and how we can have peace even in places of difficulty. The first thing I want to talk about home is this. Uh, what you need to know about home is, here it is, home is a place, home is a place where trouble has to take a time out. Uh, trouble has to take a time out. Here it is, number one, uh, verse number, number one of, uh, uh, of John, the 14th chapter, it says, let not your hearts be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. In my father's house, there are many rooms or mansions. Here it is, here it is. Home is a place of peace and rest. Home, the idealized home, even though your physical home may not feel like this, even though your physical home may not sense like this, the home that I'm talking about is a home where you have peace and you've got rest. Uh, where, where trouble has to take a time out. Where, 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 where you can be troubled on your job. You can be troubled on the train. And I know some of you had difficult commutes even on Wednesday. You can be troubled all throughout life. But when you get to your house, you say, oh, I am home. Trouble is this word terasa in the Greek. It's this idea of being afraid, of being disquieted, of being disturbed, of making restless. Uh, here, here, I, I like one of these definitions for trouble. Uh, this idea of trouble is to cause a inward commotion. That you're just always something going on. To perplex the mind. Uh, but, but there's something significant when you get home and trouble has to stop. I, I was traveling this week back and forth uh, uh, to different places, and I had to go to my parents' house in Maryland. Shout out to our Maryland family. And as I was in Maryland, I'm always reminded, whenever I get to my house in Maryland, whenever I get to, to my mama's house, uh, I always feel that nudging urge uh, to go lay down. <laughs> I, 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 I don't have to be, need to be doing anything or anything else, but as soon as I get to my mama's house... I feel the need to go lay down, to take a nap, to take a rest. I remember we used to travel back and forth down there, and we would end up trying to do so many different things, but end up sleeping the entire time. Why? It's because that's a place of, of peace. That's a place where all the troubles and challenges that are around me can come off of me, and I can be at rest. Is there anybody in here who say, I've got to protect my peace, I'm going home. 
that the trouble has to take a time out sometimes within my life. That some of us have been bullied and pushed all week long. And after the weeks that we have and the days that we experience, we get to our house and we say, I got to go lay down. Here it is, here it is, here it is. There's something about peace. Later on in John, the 14th chapter, later on in verse number 27, Jesus says, peace I leave with you. My peace I give to you. I do not give to you as the world gives. Do not let your hearts be troubled and do not be afraid. When you are home, you can go to a place where trouble has to put a time out. Okay, let me put it this way. Uh, I, my, my son was celebrating his birthday a couple weeks ago, but he still, he just got back here to the New York area, so he had a birthday celebration with his friends from school. And they were playing uh, one of their games. They'd like to play. They had these little Nerf guns. Uh, and, and they were playing one of their games, Fortnite. Uh, and, and, and I got into it. I ain't going to lie to you. I got into it myself because I said, I'm, I'm wanting to play. And so I, I was playing with all these 10, 10 and 11-year-olds uh, and shooting these little Nerf guns, running up and, <laughs> running up, running up and down uh, like, a, like a little kid. Uh, and, and the interesting thing, there's some things uh, that when you are growing up is the same way it is here. Uh, we, while we were playing and while we were shooting and while we were running around, uh, uh, there, there's something called base. <laughs> uh, that, that when you run and get to base, uh, you're safe. Uh, that, that's how it was when I was growing up. And, and it's the same way even today. And so they, they would be going and run. And all you had to do is you had to make sure you could make it back to base. Uh, and, and you would be all right. Uh, but well, can I encourage somebody in the sanctuary on this Sunday uh, uh, that you have a base uh, and you have a safe space uh, that when the arrows of the enemy are coming to attack you uh, and tear you down uh, and try to destroy you and take you out uh, that you have a place uh, where you can run to. Uh, is there anybody in this sanctuary on this Sunday uh, that's able to say uh, I'm as safe at base uh, that, that, that I've got a home to go to uh, that the enemy won't always trouble me, uh, that he won't always push me around, that he won't always bully me around, uh, but I've got a place to go to. My time is almost up. i got 10 minutes. Here it is. Uh, uh, trouble uh, has to be put in time out when you go home. The second thing about when you get home, when you go home, here it is, you always have a room that's ready. You always have a room that's ready. This is my father's house. There are many mansions or rooms. If it were not so, I would have told you uh, and that I am going there to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come back and take you to be with me uh, so that where I am, you may also be. Uh, here, here's this idea, this idea that we have a place and we have a room that's reserved for us. That there's nothing worse than going on a long journey traveling somewhere and the people who you're supposed to stay with the hotel or the place does not have a reserved room for you H have you ever been in that after a long travel and after a long journey you get to the place and you thought you made the reservations i remember i was traveling somewhere and we thought that the person had made the reservations and they had made the reservations for the day the next day after and we had no room have you ever felt that isolated space where there was no space for you? In, in my mama's house, as I was telling you, in my mama's house, uh, uh, when, when I went, went home, uh, I went to my old room where I, I used to, to, to stay, where I used to be. And, and they had uh, before made almost like a little shrine with pictures and <laughs> different things for me, all, all the different things. But, uh, y'all, I, I went back uh, uh, last year, and when I went back last year, all my pictures were gone. All, all, all my stuff was out of there. It was all pink. <laughs> and pink sheets and pink this. And, and Malia said, now, Daddy, this is my room. This used to be your room, but this, this is uh, my room. <laughs> she said, this ain't your room. No, you don't have a place here anymore. Don't, don't you know and aren't you thankful that God's not like that? That God says, I've always got a space and a room for you. That there's always room for where you are. Here, this term, Father's House, is not just a, a haphazard term. 
Uh, but it comes from the Hebrew term, Hebrew term and understanding of what's called a bet av. Bet av. Bet meaning house, av meaning father. The bet av. The, the, the father's house uh, is unique because they did not live the way that we live today. We live in separate houses in different places uh, located. I live in this area. I live in that area. In, in that time frame, uh, they all lived together in the father's house. The father, who was the patriarch of that particular family, uh, uh, developed either a tent and then maybe later on with urbanization developed it into a structured house. Uh, and what would happen is when people, uh, the sons would get married, what would happen is they would build on rooms to the father's house. So it just extend the father's house larger and larger and larger as the children would get married and as the grandchildren would get married, they would build onto uh, this father's house. And so Jesus, when he's speaking this, he's speaking a language that the people are familiar with. Because we say, in my father's house, there are many rooms. He's literally saying that, guess what? Uh, you are part of the family. Ah, I need you to get this. But what Jesus is not just saying is that you've got a space to rent. He's not just saying that you have a hotel. But when he says there's a room in my father's house, he's literally saying you are like one of the sons. And you're going to have access to not just the house, but to rooms and to space. That I'm including you into the family. With all its rights and privileges. He added them into uh, the Father's house. He says, there's room for you. And he says, but I've got to go away, uh, and, and I'll come back for you. Uh, he says, but you know the way home. <laughs> Isn't that unique? That regardless of where you are, you can find your way home. Regardless of what's going on, that you can find your way home. And, and, and Thomas, you know Thomas, got something smart to say. Thomas rolls up and says, Lord, we don't know where you're going. And how can we know the way? Jesus responds back to Thomas and lets him know, uh, says, listen, uh, uh, I am the way. I am the truth. And I am the life. No one comes to the Father uh, except through me. What, what is Jesus saying? He says, uh, Thomas, if you know who I am, uh, you know where home is. Well, I need somebody to catch this and get this on this morning. Uh, uh, that what Jesus is saying to Thomas, he's also saying to us, uh, that if you know Jesus, uh, you know the way home. That, that means, beloved, a young person in college, regardless of where you are, Regardless of where you find yourself, regardless of the situation, if you call on the name of Jesus, you can find your way home. I don't know who I'm preaching and speaking to in this place on today, but has anybody ever been on the job and the pressure has been so much and the tension has been so difficult and the challenges have been so real and all you could do is say, how am I going to make it out of this? I'm glad you asked. Call on the name of Jesus and you can find your way home. Somebody's wrestling in their mind mentally. They're trying to put things together, trying to understand what's going on and what's taking place. If you call on the name of Jesus, you can find your way home. Why is that? Because Jesus said, I am the way, and I am the truth, and I am the life. Is there anybody in here on the first Sunday in September that's not afraid to say, I know my way home? How do you know your way home? Because I know who Jesus is. Does anybody know him in this place? Does anybody say, I can call call on him uh, and he will answer. Uh, I'll call on him in the midnight hour. Some of you know this, uh, that you may not have remembered much, uh, but if you remember anything, you remember that when you get in trouble, uh, to call on the name of, of Jesus uh, and he'll meet you right where you are. Hold on. I got three minutes. Here it is. Uh, trouble, when we're on our way home, trouble uh, is put in time out. When we're on our way home, we have a room 
that's always ready. Last thing, when you go home, when you go home, last thing, uh, uh, is that you get to participate in certain privileges. Okay. Uh, uh, when you go home, uh, you go, you act differently. <laughs> now, 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 uh, if you had good home training, you know you can't just act any type of way when you're at somebody else's house. You, you got to behave, you got you to act right. I, I, one times we, we send our kids to certain people's houses and, and they say, oh, they were so well behaved. I say, you really don't know them. <laughs> they on their best behavior. <laughs> But when you get home, you get certain privileges. What are the privileges? You get seconds. <laughs> you, 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 you get to get participate in stuff. When you're at home, you get to kick off your shoes and relax a little while. When you have home, you don't have to ask permission for certain things. You have access to everything. Okay, okay. I, I'm here to let you know that, that, that as believers, uh, uh, we can go home, and when we go home, we are able to participate uh, in certain privileges. I'm in the Bible. The Bible says in John, the 14th chapter, verse number 12, very truly, I tell you, Jesus speaking, whoever believes in me uh, will do the works I have been doing, uh, and they will do even greater works uh, than these, uh, because I'm going to my Father. I, I, I'm, sometimes I think believers miss this passage uh, instead of recognizing what this passage is saying. Jesus is saying uh, that you as believers, you my disciples, uh, are going to do even greater things than me. He says, because I'm going uh, to the Father. Uh, but because I'm going to the Father, I'm empowering you uh, to do uh, what I've done. Uh, well, I'm here to encourage the believers and the people of God uh, that if you have the presence of God living inside of you, uh, God is calling on you for even greater things. Uh, that, that there is a season and a time for greater uh, in your life. Uh, that you have to be allergic to ordinary, average, and unoriginal. Uh, but rather, you have to enter into a place uh, where you're saying, if God God is for me who can be against me that if God is working in me regardless of the things that are around me I know that God is calling for greater that God is positioning and placing me in spaces and places for him to do a greater work in me it's not for me to brag it's not for me to be boastful but it's for him to get his glory Jesus entered into moments with healing I believe in healing for today. Jesus spoke those things that are not as though they would be. That's called prophecy. I believe in the gifts of the prophet. I believe that God can do whatever God wants to do in and through his people. Is there anybody in this sanctuary on this Sunday that's able to say, I'm expecting greater. I'm believing God for greater. I'm trusting God for greater. Greater, greater, greater greater, 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 uh, greater in my life, uh, greater in my family, uh, greater in my church, uh, greater in the things of the world. Uh, God's going to do it, uh, not because I'm so great, uh, but because he's so great. Uh, and the Bible says uh, that not only did he say greater things will I do, uh, but he also says uh, in this same passage uh, in John the 14th chapter, uh, in verse number 13, uh, and I will do do whatever you ask in my name so the Father may be glorified in the Son. You may ask of me for anything in my name and I will do it. What are you trying to say, Pastor? When you get home, you get access to everything. Is there anybody in here on this morning that's able to say, God, I'm going to ask you for some stuff, but I know you're faithful to give it not because I'm worthy of it, but because you are at your home. I'm at the house. I'm at home. And because I'm at home and I'm at the house, I got access 
uh, to things. Uh, I got access uh, to asking uh, you to do exceedingly uh, and abundantly uh, above all I can ask, think, or imagine. Uh, is there anybody in this place on this morning uh, that said, I'm going to ask uh, and I'm going to believe uh, healing uh, is the children's bread. Uh, I'm going to ask uh, and I'm going to believe uh, that he'll supply all my needs uh, according to his riches and glory. Uh, I'm going to ask uh, and I'm going to believe uh, that there's going to be breakthrough uh, in my life. Uh, I'm going to ask uh, and I'm going to believe uh, miracles, signs, and wonders. Uh, I'm going to ask uh, and I'm going to believe uh, that everything that's dead, uh, he's going to raise up. Uh, I'm going to ask, uh, I'm going to trust, uh, and I'm going to believe uh, that God's able to do it. Uh, is there anybody in here uh, who said, I'm going home, uh, and because I'm going home, uh, I got access to everything I need. Uh, if that's you in this place, uh, would you lift up your hands uh, and say, I got access uh, to everything I need. Uh, call on the name of Jesus, uh, and he will answer. Up. Call on the name of Jesus up, and he will answer prayer. Up. Somebody call on his name. Up. If you believe him on this Sunday, up, won't you lift up your voice up, and say, God, I need you up, to move. Up. I need you up, to heal. Up. I need you up, to deliver. Up. I need you up, to make ways. I need you up, to open up doors. Up. I need you up, to show yourself mighty but because I've got access I can call on you and you will answer I'm at the house and I can call on the name of the Lord now I know what you're saying pastor He's talking about home in heaven when, when, I, when we die. I'm not ready to go home yet. <laughs> I, say, I, 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 ain't, I ain't ready to go home yet. But I remember whenever I would travel far, whether it be to Europe, Africa, whether it be when I went to college or went away, my parents would always give me something. So they said, so I could be reminded of home. This isn't original to them, but I think it originated with Jesus. Because <laughs> he says, I'm going to prepare a place for you. I'm going to make a home for you. But there in that same passage, Elder Coke, in John, the 14th chapter, verse number 15, he says, if you love me, you'll keep my commandments. And I will ask the Father, and he will give you another comforter to help you and be with you forever the spirit of truth. Later on, verse 26, he says, but the advocate or the comforter, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, will teach you all things and remind you of everything as he said to you. Peace I leave with you. My peace I give you. I do not give you as the world gives. Do not let your hearts be troubled. And don't be afraid. I need us to get this. So yes, home is a place I'm going after I transition from this life to the next. But I got a piece of home right here with me. It's called the Holy Spirit. 
It's called the advocate. It's called the comforter. And if you're a believer, you've got the Holy Spirit with you. And so what are you trying to say? That regardless of where I am and regardless of what I'm in, regardless of what I'm facing and regardless of what I'm wrestling with, I can be at peace because I can be at home on my job. I can be at home in my church. I can be at home on the block. I can be at home in the job. I can be at home in the school because I've got a comforter who is with me. I've got a home that is right here with me. Is there anybody in here who said you can't trouble my peace because I've got home right here. You can mess up with my anointing because I got home right here. Come as you will. Come as you may. But I got my home right here. So this week when somebody comes for you who you didn't send for this week when you get trouble and you get challenged just sit down wherever you are and they ask you what you're doing just let them know I'm going home what you mean you ain't moving I ain't moving but I'm going home because God's rising up on the inside of me is there anybody in here who say I got a comforter I got an advocate I got somebody who tells trouble it's got term limits who tells difficulty it can't who's able to look at your situation uh, and say, do not be afraid. Uh, do not be troubled. Uh, peace I give to you. Uh, peace I give to you. Uh, the peace of God uh, that transcends all understanding uh, will guard your heart uh, and mind in Christ Jesus. Uh, look at your neighbor uh, and tell them, neighbor, uh, oh neighbor, uh, I'm going uh, home. Uh, look at your neighbor. I ain't putting up with this foolishness. I ain't fighting through this mess. But I'm going home. Look at your neighbor and tell them, neighbor, I'm not going to be stressed. I'm not going to lose any sleep. I ain't going to let no hair fall out. But I'm going home. Is there anybody in here who say when the enemy comes against me and tries to take me out, I'm home because he anoints my head with oil my lattice shall be greater than my passion and no weapon formed against me shall prosper point blank period I'm going home stand all over this place. I'm going home. A place where trouble has to take a time out. I'm going home. A place where I always got a room that's ready. I'm going home, a place where I'm able to partake of all the privileges that have been given unto me. I'm looking at folks who are operating in greater. This last four months of this year, I need us to center ourselves back home so that we can launch to what God has for us. When you have no center, you have nothing to anchor you when you're launching forward. But if you get to the place where you're saying, I know where my home is. I know where my place is. I know who God is in my life. And I'm able to say, then from there, I'm going to greater. 
I'm going to what he has for me. I'm going to what he's called me to do. If you know that this is home, that God's spirit and presence is resting in you and on you even right now, would you lift up those hands in the universal sign of surrender? Father, we thank you that you are with us and you're for us. And you call us home. You call us to a place of safety, security, and peace. That God, regardless of what's going on around us, we have peace on the inside of us. Solidify that in us even today. Let us find the center of who you are. God, even as we go on this journey this week, in prayer and fasting. Draw us closer and deeper to who you called us to be. We want to go home. We want to be in the place of safety and security. Solidify that in us even today. We lift this up before you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. His heads are bowed and eyes are closed even in this place. There may be somebody who does not know what home looks like because you may have had a difficult home. You may not know where home is because you don't know the one who can take you home. His name is Jesus. So whether in person or streaming online, if you want to know Jesus as your Lord and Savior, if you want to say yes to him, heads about nine to close, which is simply indicate by sending us a message online or just lifting up a hand in the physical sanctuary. We want to pray for and with you concerning this, that Jesus would move within your heart and you would say yes to him. I see that hand. Is there another? Is there, I see that hand. It's another one to say yes to him. To Jesus be the Son. Come on, is there another? Just lift up the hand and bring it down. Yes. Yes. Jesus, Jesus, be the center. It's all about you. Yes, it's all about If you lifted a hand and you wanted to say yes to Jesus, there's others who are around you to pray with you. But I'd ask you to pray with me, simply saying, Father, I admit that I'm a sinner. I haven't always followed your ways, but I'm asking that you would forgive me. I believe that your son, Jesus Christ died for my sins, he was buried, but on the third day, rose again. Because he rose, I can rise again. Come into my heart, Jesus, and make me over. I make this confession with my mouth, but I'll live it with my life forevermore. In Jesus' name, in Jesus' name, in Jesus' name, amen and amen. If you pray that prayer, there are those who are there to minister and walk you through the process of discipleship. There's also, if you're online, you can fill out those forms to walk you through this process of knowing and understanding who God is in and concerning your life. Amen. Amen. Can somebody put their hands together because somebody found their way home? I said, can somebody put those hands together because somebody found their way home? Come on, come on. Can, can you simply say, welcome home? Can somebody simply say, welcome home? Can somebody simply say, welcome home? sanctuary just for these four moments. As we prepare to go home, we were thankful and grateful for what Christ has done in and through our lives. 
for the giving of his life for us. We remember and recognize this in the celebration of communion, the fellowship and recognition of what Christ has done. They gave his life for and concerning us. Beloved, this is what we believe as we approach this table on this morning. We believe in God, the Father Almighty, the maker of heaven and earth. We believe in Jesus Christ, his only son, our Lord, who was conceived of the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried, descended to hell, but on the third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended to heaven and is seated at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, meaning universal, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Do you believe this? Do you believe this? Do you believe this? Amen and amen. If you could stand all over this place. Lord Jesus, on the night in which we betrayed, took bread and we had given thanks. He broke it and said, take, eat, this is my body which is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. The same manner he took the cup after supper, saying, this cup is a new covenant in my blood. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Beloved, we declare even as you have those elements before you, if you would take them and lift them before the Father, we consecrate these elements. The things of God for the people of God, thanks be unto God. Come on, declare. that was given for us, let us eat together. This blood that was shed for the remission of our sins, let us drink together. Beloved, let us pray as Jesus taught us to pray, saying together, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen amen. The things of God for the people of God. Thanks be unto God. It's fair to leave out this place with never God's presence. There's several things I want to lift up for us. 
and reminders and reiterations as we celebrate a communion together. We're going to offer you an opportunity to worship the Lord tangibly and giving of a tithe and an offering unto the Lord. Uh, there are several ways you can participate in giving. If you're physically in the building, you can drop off those gifts as you exit out. If you're online or you give online, you can always text CRC Give to 77977. You can go to online to clarendonroadchurch.org, download the app in the App Store, or uh, mail in those gifts uh, to Clarendon Road Church, 3304 Clarendon Road, Brooklyn, New York. We want to note that several ways and opportunities to give in our tithes and offering, in our benevolence offering, as well as in Haitian relief, uh, relief for Haiti. Uh, we're asking that you would give in those three areas on this Sunday. Uh, our tithes and offering, our general normal tithes and offering uh, for those who are suffering and struggling in regards to uh, the island of Haiti, as well as for the benevolence for those who are in our community and neighborhood who have been suffered with effects of loss and pain that we can be of support to them. We thank you in advance for your generosity and giving. Now you've been faithful unto the Lord in giving all these nine months. We say thank you. We say thank you. And we believe that as you take care of God's house, God will take care of. As you take care of God's house, God will take care of. Won't you lift up those gifts, even if you don't physically have it? Would you just lift up your hand or lift up a smartphone, a smart device? God, we thank you, Nani, for this opportunity to worship you in giving. We ask, oh God, that you would use these gifts for your kingdom purposes. And the message of Jesus Christ would be preached here in this community as well as around the world. We'll be careful to give your name the glory, the honor, the adoration, the thanksgiving, and praise. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Thank you for your giving unto the Lord. A couple announcements before we exit out of this place, but never God's presence. Uh, we want to note that we have a virtual bereavement comfort zone for those who are suffering loss, so that we can be of comfort and strength to you, led by our very own Pastor Matthew, uh, who is pastorally trained as well as clinically, clinically trained in regards to uh, counseling. Uh, and so we want you to ask that you would be a part of our comfort zone if you are suffering bereavement or loss. That is on September 9th, September 9th, which is Thursday, September 9th at 6.30 p.m. We also want to know if you're a first-time visitor for our in-person worship. If you're a first-time visitor for our in-person worship, uh, we uh, want to welcome you to this worship experience. Uh, if you can lift up a hand, we'll have somebody who's going to connect with you uh, and uh, walk with you through this process of, of just greeting you in a special way. We're not going to embarrass you. We're not going to put you on the spot. We just want to make sure that we connect with you. If you're a first-time visitor, just lift up that hand, uh, and we will uh, make sure that we're connecting. If we see that hand, we'll make sure we're connecting you in a special way. Amen? Amen, 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 and amen. Come on, let's lift up those right hands of fellowship and prepare to leave out this place, but never God's presence. For if I got anything, please charge it to my mind and not to my heart. Father, we thank you, Nani, for everything that was said and done in this place. We thank you, God, for the spirit it was done in. We thank you, oh God, that there is a homecoming, that we have a place called home, a place, oh God, where trouble has to take a time out. We have a place, oh God, where we've got a room that's ready. We thank you, oh God, that there is a place, oh God, we're able to participate in every privilege that you have for us because we can go home. We honor you, we lift you up and magnify you now. And we ask these things now in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. In Jesus' mighty evangelist's name, we declare the people of God who believe and trust God said, 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 amen, amen. You are dismissed. Share the love of God so much near you and next to you.